So, welcome, perfect hour. Yeah, salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, Murad. How are you, inshallah? Very good. How have you been? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm fine. Excellent, excellent to have you on. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yes, I will start my uh, live stream a um, little bit later today, maybe mm. in about right. two hours, maybe. <laughs> Let's see how long no. your uh, we can talk. And then after that, half an hour later, I start my, uh, you know, All live right. stream. Yes. Mm. Okay. What are you going to talk to uh, about no. today, brother? Brilliant talk about you know that uh, that verse um aflaita dabaruna alquran wa law kana min inda ghayri allah li wajidu fi ikhtilaf kathira that verse where you know i put it in the in the description where you know god says about um the quran will not ponder the quran and if it had been from other than god they would have found in it um, many discrepancies or many differences mm -hmm. um, so i was just going to talk about that share a few thoughts about that um i want to get away from doing too long of these presentations because usually in these you know i started off doing just doing short things i think uh, and then I gradually i was uh, my presentations of what i'm i was showing were getting longer and longer and you know the, the main purpose of these streams which i started in uh, ramadan last year and i decided to you know do them for a whole year every week alhamdulillah i've done them pretty much every week uh, i think we've only missed one week because um, it wasn't something was going on, it wasn't working. Uh, and the purpose of them was just really to encourage other people to um, to think of the, through the Quran themselves, to ponder the Quran by themselves, uh, to not be so dependent on, um, you know, tafsir books or scholars or, you know, that sort of thing. So it was, the purpose was for me to sort of model in the first uh, few, you know, half an hour, sorry, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to, to give an example of that from my own, you know, my own to double, my own notes, my own, you know, pondering of the Quran. Uh, and then invite, you know, leave, leave the mic open for anybody to come along, uh, to come on and share whatever insights they might have had um, from their own, you know, pondering of the Quran. So that's basically it. Anybody can come on, you know, um, um, Muslim, no matter which sect, ex-Muslim, no, no matter what, um, you know, or um, non-Muslim Quran, um, they're more than welcome to do so. So that, that's basically the, the point of the, this, this stream. Yes. Mm. I, <clears throat> I would like to talk about the verse we were talking about um, a little bit later, if you want. Actually, yeah, the, you, you said you wanted to speak. I think you said you want to speak about the, the verse we spoke about last week. Mm -hmm. The one about the um, crucifixion. Uh, oh, no, the crucifixion. Okay, yes, go ahead. Yes, no, you, I think you messaged me about that. It was last week we were speaking about the ambiguous verses and in the Muhammad and with the Shabi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, even yeah. that one, yes. Yeah, uh, you, said you, 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 had, you said you had something to share about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't remember what that brother was saying. Uh, actually, I don't remember um, uh, how he was saying. But uh, uh, what I know uh, is that uh, uh, how we understand, because Allah says that uh, only Allah and those fear me knowledge understand the true meaning of the, those verses. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I know, uh, how to understand the true meaning of them is to put them beside other verses of Quran. And uh, that is, uh, uh, the, 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 in that way we can, uh, you know, understand the true meaning of them. Uh, for example, the, the verse about, uh, which we were talking about, um, let me find it, uh, the crucifixion, okay? Yeah. Uh, It is a the verse of Hirab, right? About yeah. those who wage war. Yes, uh, chapter uh, five, verse. God and his yes, chapter five, verse 30, uh, 33. Yeah, <clears throat> and this is something that uh, 
always the okay. Islamophobics they bring up and they say, oh, look, what is this? You mm. know, how can God allow us to, uh, you know, chop someone's hand and arm on the opposite side and crucify them? So, mm. first of all, uh, <clears throat> when we see that the, the verse is uh, in this part that says that the recompensation, uh, recompense of those who wage war uh, those who fight Allah and his messenger and seek to make corruption in the land is that they be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet be cut off from uh, alternate sides or mm -hmm. that they be uh, banished from uh, from, uh, from, the land. from the land. That is their mm -hmm. disgrace in this world and in the hereafter they will have a great torment, yeah, punishment. So when, yeah. uh, if you, first of all, it is, uh, when we see that it is, uh, has been used uh, passive verb, where it, it doesn't mean that uh, this is a command from Allah SWT that we Muslim do that. This is what happens to them. You live by sword, you will die by sword. Okay. This is uh, like uh, uh, if I say that uh, if you smoke, you will get cancer. Okay. Uh, lung cancer and you will die. It doesn't mean that I give you cancer. This is what will happen to you. This is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when you put it beside the chapter 7, verse 124, mm -hmm. okay, it says, Pharaoh says, yeah. I will uh, certainly cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides and crucify you all. Okay, then chapter 20, verse 71, the Pharaoh says, he, he said, have you believed in him? He means uh, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Before taking my permission, he is surely your great one who has thought you magic. So I will cut off your hands and feet from alternate sides and I will crucify you on the trunks of um, the palm trees and you will come to know which uh, of us is greater in retribution and more uh, lasting. Okay, so this was, uh, uh, you know, this Hari Sultan who is called ex-Muslim, okay, because I don't believe that they are ex-Muslims. Uh, I myself, uh, at the age of 25, I became atheist, and um, I don't, uh, alhamdulillah, later, uh, I realized that I was wrong, and I never call myself ex-ex-Muslim, because I didn't know anything about Islam like that. I knew just a little bit. So I just was born to a Muslim family. So anyway, this Hari Sultan, picked up this one and I said that, uh, no, this is uh, what happens to them. By whom? By p pagans, by fraud, and by, uh, you know, those who commit such a crimes, okay? So it happens to them because they don't follow Allah SWT's mm -hmm. laws. And I told him that, so who is following whose law? If Pharaoh was doing that, okay, 3,500 years ago, so it doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his punishment and say to us Muslims to follow Pharaohs. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws is totally, uh, you know, most merciful and forgiving is totally absolutely opposite to what pagans were doing. So this is um, uh, what I was going to talk to you about that, that Allah, when you put this verse beside those two verses, you see that it is Pharaoh who does such a things. It is pagans who does such a things. Okay, not that we, mm -hmm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says to us, to Muslims, that we have to be as cruel, as barbaric as Pharaoh was, or pagans are. Okay, so we, we mm -hmm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala teach us everywhere that we have to forgive, even a murderer. We have to forgive a murderer. In that uh, verse. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if you forgive, it's better for you. Later he says that if you forgive, I will forgive your sins. So he even 
compensate us so that we forgive those who harms us okay because Allah SWT knows that people do bad deeds because of you know uh, because of lack of knowledge or because of other reasons so uh, what do you think brother do you think that Allah SWT says that we have to you know commit those mm-hmm. crimes that the pagans were committing Oh, uh, me? Well, uh, to be honest, you know, I mean, one of the things about this stream is I don't really want to make it into a, a thing where uh, where somebody comes on, tells me, and says what they what they what they think about something, and I sort of like, um, you know, give my opinion too too much on it. That's because um, mm-hmm. I wanted like what you've done, mashallah here, um, mm-hmm. for everybody who who maybe didn't catch it. What our brother Perfect Dawa here is saying is because this verse is in the, the passive, right? So it says, in the majizahu ladina, truly the 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 reward of those who who wage war or make war on God and his messenger and strive or is fil strive on the earth uh, for corruption and you that they should be um, killed, they are killed and you or you sallabu or they are crucified or impaled or the other mean, you know, soul don't forget doesn't have to mean like um, the Roman cross kind of um, crucifixion, crucifixion. That, that, of course, you know, Pharaoh and people like that weren't doing that. That came later in the Roman Empire, or you know, the the hands and 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 things to be chopped from opposite ends, um, or that they are um, exiled from the earth, basically. And mm-hmm. so, our brother Perfect Dawah here is saying because this is, this is said in the passive. He's saying that um, this is not a command from God. It's not a command from God, and um, we should not be basically imitating God's God's commandment. Would not be an imitation of uh, pagans. Pagans of yeah, is that right? Ex- yes, exactly. It's uh, God's command is <clears throat> to forgive, to be mercy. Uh, you know, mm. and the, um, Allah Taala never allows us to kill uh, capti- captives. He even uh, we know in the Battle of Bad when Allah, uh, Prophet peace be on him saw that his own soldiers they were you know they had tied uh, the enemy's hands and they were drawing them he became angry with his own soldiers and said open their hands treat them well share your food equally with them and each prisoner who uh, what is it teach ten Muslim reading and writing will be free okay so this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us to be kind to even prisoners of war and uh, mm. to to keep them until war lay down and release them or compensate them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran uh, when you catch them so he doesn't mm. allow us to be you know to go against even Geneva convention <laughs> you know to crucify mm. people you know prisoners of war yeah yeah so you know, the, it's a very very interesting very interesting um, mm-hmm. um way of looking at this verse um so yeah excellent excellent do you have any other insights into any other verses? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, also, uh, actually, there are, you know, chapter 5, verse 38. Okay. Uh, Let's go there. Yes, chapter 5, verse 38. This one, so this is about the, the um, chopping of the hands, right? Yes, chopping of the hands, yeah, of the thieves. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So this is a... Uh, unfortunately, they have been, uh, what is it, um, misinterpreting this verse because it says, at all yad, yeah, you ha- uh, uh, to qata'u al yadahuma, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. In this verse, uh, if you just translate it, it means they chop their hands off, okay. But yeah. when you look at the other verses, as I said, you have to put them beside other verses, you see that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used hands in Quran 120 times, okay? And yes. he has himself hands in Quran. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, chapter 5, verse 64. Those Jews said, Allah's hands are tied. It is they whose hands are tied. They are uh, cursed by Allah and so on. Okay, doesn't matter. Mostly is that Allah says that Jew says that Allah has and are tied, and then yeah. uh, Allah says, 
God's both hands are open wide, okay? So that's why some, uh, unfortunately, scholars say that Allah has two, two hands, okay? Which we know that nothing is comparable to Allah. Nothing that exists can be compared to Allah. Allah doesn't, is not like anything that exists, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hand, have hands because here it says hands. So, and then, uh, uh, okay, that is also has been used 34 times in, in Quran, okay, and has many different meanings, uh, you know, uh, for example, chapter 2, verse 166, uh, that means cutting of a relationship, and there are many other, uh, you know, meaning of that. So, when we look at, <coughs> uh, uh, let me see, chapter 12, verse uh, 31. Chapter 12, verse 31. If you bring that, Shall brother. Bring chapter, chapter 12, verse 31. 12, verse 31. <coughs> yeah. This is okay. the story of Yusuf. Yes, a story of Yusuf. Exactly the same word has been used here, at ul yad, okay, that they had uh, a knife and they were peeling, uh, you know, a fruit. And then... Joseph, peace be upon him, um, you know, enters. And then what happens here, they translate it, they cut their hands. They didn't cut off their both hands. They cut their hands, just cut, yeah? Here they translate it as they cut their hands. And then, interesting is that they don't scream, they don't say anything, not Allah SWT doesn't talk about a single blood, drop of blood. And they say that, they were stoned uh, by his beauty that they cut their hands and uh, ex, uh, exclaimed, God, uh, sorry, good God, this cannot be human. This must be a noble angel. Okay. So here they, unfortunately, they, the same words they translated as they cut their hands just. Okay. Which uh, doesn't make sense because, um, uh, first of all, they couldn't be, uh, it is simply they stop peeling and they start to be so uh, passionate. And then later in chapter 538, okay, if you go back again to chapter 538, uh, go to chapter 5, verse 39 in a step. 5, 39. Yes, 39. It says that, mm -hmm. but... If they repent, or who's repent after his wrongdoing and amended, sorry, uh, Allah will relent towards him. Allah is forgiven. No, uh, actually, uh, I have, uh, but whoever repent after his wrongdoing and uh, reforms, indeed, Allah will turn to him in forgiveness indeed Allah so Allah says that Allah will forgive them yeah if they repent so yeah. the question is that um, if you have you know punished someone okay how can you forgive for example I gave this uh, example to somebody like Farid and I said that imagine that you pass the red light okay and the officer catch you Okay, and take your driving license and give you a thousand dollars ticket. And you say, Oh, officer, forgive me, I will not do this anymore. Okay, the officer tells you that obviously, if he has to forgive you, then he has to give you back your driving license and you don't need to pay even the ticket. Okay, so but if the officer tells you that, No, okay, I forgive you, forgive you but you have to pay the, the ticket and you have to get a new driving license. What kind of forgiveness is that? Okay, it doesn't make sense. So, it, chapter 538 simply says that stop their power, okay, because hand here is the mean of stealing, the power, okay, the opportunity. Allah SWT says stop their power, their opportunity, and if they repent Allah will forgive them the next uh, verse says that didn't you, you know that uh, Allah owns everything and he can forgive or punish anyone he wants okay so uh, this uh, what is it uh, 
let me read for you uh, from Ali Radiallah uh, how, uh, um, uh, what is it, how a good uh, governor should be, okay? Ali Radiallah says to his own uh, governor of Egypt, Malik, it says, people do bad deeds because of different reasons, intentionally or by mistake, but you forgive them as you expect that your God forgives your bad deeds. You are stronger than the people, uh, but remember the one who put you there is stronger than you, and God is stronger than the one who put you there. The worst people for you must be those who try to reveal people's mistakes and sins, because people make mistakes and sins, and the governor is the one who must cover them. Do not try to find out people's mistakes, because your duty is to fix the problems that leads people to bad deeds and it is God's right to judge people not yours cover people's mistake and sins as much as you can so that God or Allah covers yours so this is how a governor a great Muslim governor uh, you know rule uh, a country for example uh, in my home country Iran okay these mullahs who are uh, ruling the country uh, kindly share your insights about the verse, Karun. Yeah, so um, somebody's asking if you could share your insight about the verse, Kuntum Khaira Ummatin. You know, you are the best nation brought out to mankind. You know this verse? Uh, so I have to. Fish and fish, what you saying? First, yes, 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 yes. It. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the thing is that, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't uh, put the judgment on us because we are, can always be wrong, okay? We can, you know, uh, even with the most modern way of, you know, judging people by DNA, all these things, unfortunately, we make mistake, okay? And we even don't know what happened to this person when he was committing a crime. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us, as I said in that chapter, an eye for an eye, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you forgive, then Allah will, uh, you know, forgive your sins, okay? So, mm. because this is a very, very difficult, uh, you know, uh, um, how do you say, um, a very, very uh, important, um, if we make mistake, okay, then we are responsible in Qiyamah. And then who is going to, uh, you know, because uh, the Quran doesn't talk about uh, for how much you have to chop someone's house, for one dollar or one billion dollars. And we know it is, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, even to steal one dollar. By the way, sarq, sargat, yeah, in, in Arabic, mm -hmm. yeah, stealing. Yeah. Even in Quran, uh, stealing information is, you know, is uh, also sargat, is uh, stealing. So what you gonna do there? Chop their ears? Okay, it's not that. It's just a stop their, uh, you know, way of stealing. And then if they forgive Allah for, uh, uh, you know, forgive them. So uh, what I was saying is that, for example, in my home country, a bunch of mullahs, they are robbing people by billions of dollars, okay? And if you just go and steal something, they chop your, uh, okay, there they chop fingers. They don't chop your hand right away. They chop fingers, okay? Anyway, they chop your fingers and uh, they themselves are the biggest thieves. So how do we know the judge who is going to judge me or you, my brother, for something that you have done is not himself a robber or, uh, you know, a bad person, you know, like many of these uh, scholars. So uh, what a good government has to do, for example, in Afghanistan, our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, they produce 90% of the world opium, okay? The solution is not to, you know, execute them or take them and put them in jail. They do it because they are poor. In Sweden, a secular government, what the uh, uh, Swedish government does so that farmers of Sweden doesn't, uh, they don't uh, produce drugs, uh, the government take tax from the taxpayers, okay, and give it to the farmers. So farmers ha are well off. They have house, they have car, they have everything. So they don't need to produce uh, you know, drugs, 
Okay, the way to stop people from doing such a things is to, you know, deal with them. As Ali Radiallahu said also that your duty is to fix the problem, not to, you know, punish people. Because by punishing people, nothing will change. These problems will always continue. So Islam is the final message of God because Islam has come to fix the problems, the source of the problems, not by saying, you know, by, for example, um, saying that drug is haram because drug is haram everywhere, okay? But people, even in Sweden, in secular countries, people, they use drugs, people produce drugs. So the, 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 the way to fix the problem is another way, not by just saying, oh, this is haram, that is halal, you know? This is forbidden, that is... Can I ask not... you... Yes, please. Yes, I just want to ask you, so am I right in saying that... Um... Um, you don't accept any of the any any of the any verses in the Quran that they say there should be a punishment. So no, 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 no. The, the verses, okay, the verses yeah, yeah. About, uh, about zina. Okay, yeah. The, um, the one about lashing. Do you have? Uh, oh, um, I know that. What you I think know. About that? I know, my brother. Okay, look, uh, this is um, okay. I, 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 as I said, I'm yeah. gonna... sorry, you, you're. Yeah. Your, your voice is uh, because you your, you mentioned your voice two, your voice is uh, uh, cutting off. Uh, you're, you're lagging. Things which were about punishment. You're lagging, brother. So of course I'm just passing off. Just give me yeah yes. Hear me now? No. Okay, now maybe now you're you're lagging. Now you can hear me. Yeah, now I hear you. Yes. All right. So I was just because you, you mentioned already two two verses which are usually understood to be about an actual um, punishment. So I'm just um, wondering if that's how you view most of the other verses about that. So, for example, um, do you, the do you believe in, um, for example, a, a life for a life? Do you, do you accept a life for a life? Okay. I, I, lashing? Do you accept those yes, things? Yes. I, I, I explain for you, my brother. Okay. If you go back mm -hmm. three thousand five hundred years, okay. The, the verse about an eye for an eye came to uh, Moses, peace be one. We have to understand. It doesn't mean when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something, it doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that. Okay? It means that there was no better alternative at that time. So 3,500 years ago, if you took my eye, brother, and I was living in a stronger tribe, I would attack with my tribe to your tribe and kill everybody, okay? Or at least I would kill you for taking my eye. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was no a better option to say that put them in jail. For example, if I, uh, uh, yeah, to, you took my eye, wasn't possible to say that I have to catch you and put you in jail because we were living in tribes, we were living in villages in muddy houses. So there was no such a, uh, opportunity like today we have and I put you for taking my eye, I put you in jail, okay? So such a possibility didn't exist. That's why this was a better step. One eye for one eye, a tooth for a tooth, a life for a life was better step than to kill entire family, entire tribe. So, but later, 1400 years ago, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added some sentence to the verse that said that if you forgive, uh, it is better for you. What is, what is better for you? It means that Allah forgives your sin. So who am I not to take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, you know, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to forgive, okay? Because he knows that people, as Ali radiallahu said, people do bad deeds because of different, you know, things. And we don't know, maybe that person, as I said, that maybe it was my fault if you are a judge, okay? Maybe it was my fault, I made him angry or so, whatever, he took my eye. So the best judge is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to leave the judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what happened at that time was a better alternative to what was there. So now about the slashing, okay? What people were doing before that, they were stoning adulterers to death, okay? That was the, the you know, the, the punishment So for adulterers. And it was uh, a pagan, uh, you know, ritual. Uh, it was uh, actually, it started by Romans and it was um, done against women. Okay. And they inserted this verse actually to, that's why I say Quran is uh, complete and Quran uh, is uh, 
being protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because those who inserted these verses, barbaric verses, into Bible and Torah, they tried to insert it in Quran, but they couldn't. What they did was that they came with fabricated hadiths and said that this verse was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, but it was eaten by a goat. Okay, which is terrible of them to say that Quran is incomplete because a verse or two verses of Quran is not in Quran because it was eaten by a goat. So what happens if you follow Quran and the Hadith? Okay, you see that you, it is impossible for you to slash anyone because you have to bring four witnesses. Okay, and these four witnesses, they must complete 10 conditions. I don't know if you know those conditions, brother. That the, the, the because I can, um, you hear me, my brother? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I had this uh, discussion with Quranist. Okay, because Quranists they don't believe in any hadith. I myself believe in hadiths that goes in line with Quran. I reject fabricated hadiths that goes against Quran. So I was asking this, uh, you know, Quranist that uh, uh, can I, me and three of my friends? Okay, we are four come uh, and say that, uh, for example, you, okay, you have committed adultery. Is it because Quran is silent about who are these uh, witnesses? They bring four witnesses. But Hadith says that these four witnesses must complete 10 conditions. They must have never forgotten their prayers. They must have never lied. They must have never forgot, uh, bro uh, sorry, broken their fast, and they must have never uh, stolen anything. And there are 10 conditions that no one can ever say that I complete all these conditions. And they must but, have um, seen. Sorry? Just to be fair, just to be fair, I don't think all of those are actually in, in hadith. There isn't, I don't think you'll find one hadith which says these are the, these are the conditions for, a, for witnesses. Um, that isn't really in hadith. It's more from the fiqh. And I understand that there, there is in the fiqh literature. Um, but, they say that. Uh, but one thing I do want to push back on, just in defense of the, uh, you know, the Quranists, as we say. Yes. Um, you know, um, are you saying then if, you know, if we hadn't had those those hadiths or those narrations, they hadn't been um, sent, you know, that mean preserved because um, it could have, they could have not been preserved. You know, it wasn't something that had to happen. This was something which was which people were doing. Um, people uh, decided which hadiths to, to accept, which not. And you know, if they are, you know, all of that. So you know, if if that didn't happen, would you say that that you couldn't um, implement that idea in the Quran? That you couldn't find a witness? Because that sounds to me like you're saying that um, you know the the, the age-old dispute that, that the Quran sort of have with other people. You know, they they are being told that if you don't have the hadiths, you can't use the Quran. That um, no, 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 uh, useless. Okay. Oh, no, 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 it's not. Hadith. It's not useless. Okay, it's not useless. Well, I mean, I mean, in this, in this, in this point about knowing who the who who are the good witnesses and stuff, um, there should be you should be able to accept it as a way to to know that um, just by you know just normal basic intellect. I mean, they're just they're just witnesses. Um, no, but uh, you just uh, okay, but there, but uh, there, there doesn't have to be the exhaustive list of ten. Um, okay. Ten um, conditions, do, do they? Okay, they, I mean, uh, I don't know how, uh, for example, if there was no hadith, um, what we do, uh, would we do when we go to Hajj? Okay, there, there are just few, uh, for example, stoning the Satan and uh, wearing the dress of Ahram is not in, in uh, Quran. Okay, so and which they, they are the most important, uh, for me, the most important part of Islam. Okay, and I was talking to... Um, a Quranist, uh, this professor um, Edip, okay, and he said it's a good yeah, idea. Yeah. Yes, it's a good idea. Do those dress of ahra, but uh, who gave this good idea? Why it didn't come to, <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, that's, Allah a, I mean that's, a, that's a separate issue. I'm just, I'm just wondering if you're saying that um, God is saying bring forth witnesses. Okay. Um, um, then we should just be able to bring forth um, witnesses. Yeah, but uh, um, the, these four witnesses can be liars, my brother. Okay. How do we know that they don't lie? Well, that's why there's four, right? <laughs> yeah, but four can be. Yeah, four can be lie. Like I can uh, bring three of my friends and say that you were, you know, we saw you coming out. We can even put, uh, you know, camera and uh, uh, set you up. 
For example, I have some issue with you, and then I invite you to a you know room, for example, hotel room. Uh, we are going to you know meet something, and then instead me, uh, we put a, a prostitute there, for example. That's and true, then you but can't. You know that that can also happen with any witnesses. Yeah. You know, even the witnesses w which follow those ten conditions, which you you know you are saying that come from hadith. No, even they, they cannot. Ten conditions. One. They cannot. First, first of all, you cannot find a single person. It is like, my brother, it is like uh, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, he was passing uh, by and he saw that they are uh, trying to, going to stone uh, an adulterer. He said that the one who has no sin must throw the first stone. And everybody realized that they are sinner, so they dropped the stones and went. So this is exactly how, um, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was not possible at that time to stop people from doing all these things like for example so is, uh, that, sleep. Is, that one of the con is that one of the conditions you're saying to be a witness you have to have no sin it is no uh, it those 10 conditions make it like this that you have never broken your fasting you have never uh, forgotten your uh, prayer you have never stolen anything you have never lied you have never lied. Nobody can say that I have never lied. I have never uh, forgotten my prayer. I have never broken my fasting. I have never stolen. All these conditions make you, not only that, okay, not only that, you have to have seen the actual, you know, uh, scene. Not that just these two came out from the house, so they were doing, you know, uh, adultery. No, you have to see them naked in the bed. And another condition okay. is that. Another okay, condition, uh, yes, yes. Because I don't want to go too much into the conditions which are in hadith and stuff. I just want to say, so um, are you saying that in lieu of these um, conditions which are in the hadith, so um, let's say we didn't have them, let's say we just we didn't, we didn't have them, are you saying there's okay. no way we could um, go forward with, with the Qur'an by itself? Uh, I mean, there is, I don't know, because it doesn't say uh, what kind of conditions the it said bring four witnesses okay so uh, it could be as i said some people can come and say that because i know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want a sinner like me to slash you or punish you for your sins who knows uh, for example uh, there was this uh, there was a guy he, in uh, in indonesia he put uh, this sharia law in the indonesian law few months later he was slashed himself for adultery, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want that a sinner, as I read for you, Ali radiallahu says that cover people's sin, okay? For example, my wife commit adultery, okay? For example, it is between me and my wife, okay? My children and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not, I, I'm sorry I say it like this, but it doesn't have anything to do with you, okay? It's none of anyone's business. It's my business and my wife, maybe it was my fault. Okay, maybe I'm adulterer yes, myself. Yes. Yeah, maybe I'm adulterer myself, but I don't get caught. My wife got caught. Okay, maybe I just I want to set her up. Okay, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. worse than that is those who believe that she has to be stoned to death. Oh my God, this is you know, this is the most mm -hmm. uh, terrible uh, way of thinking. Okay, so just going back, just going back one one a little bit. Why do you say that? Um, that God is saying God doesn't want anybody who has any sin to punish somebody else who has sin. Because we always can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, we always can be wrong. And Allah, Ali radiallahu, who is the closest person, who was closest person to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, says that people make mistake by, you know, make uh, sins by mistake or intentionally. Your duty is to get rid of the source, okay? The governor, governor the, the government, uh, must that Islamic State must get rid of the source, and I say always the source is uh, the system we are uh, we are having in this planet. It's the jungle and the jungle rule that one percent of the world population they own one hundred ten trillion dollars, okay, and they do all bad deeds to become richer and richer. They commit, uh, they provide, oh, uh, create conflicts in the Middle East, for example. They support the fascist regime of Iran to. You know, to uh, support m militants in Iraq, 
to support Assad in Syria, to create Hezbollah in Lebanon, to support Houthi rebels in uh, Yemen, because he, he, they want to occupy the entire Middle East, because they are a bunch of mafia themselves, and they get support from the West, Western country, because Western country, they want to sell their weapons to, to these uh, Gulf countries. Obama, who, won, who got a uh, Nobel Prize, do you know, he sold three times more than George Bush, he sold weapons mostly to the Middle East, okay? So that 1% want to become richer and richer, they spread, you know, poverty. Allah some ta'ala says in Quran, Satan spread poverty among you and lead you to immorality. So Satan, mm. okay, is in reality the jungle and the system that allows the mullahs of Iran to become billionaires by killing millions of people, okay? To, Satan is the system that allows farmers of Afghanistan by producing opium to become richer because potatoes and tomatoes doesn't give them that much uh, money. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the final message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Islam, came to, uh, what is it, to get rid of this satanic system that we are living in mm -hmm. so that people don't do bad deeds. By punishing, I said, by punishing people, by saying opium is haram, it doesn't okay. change anything. Farmers of Afghanistan, they have to put All food right. on their I table. Think, yes? so, sorry to cut you off, but uh, you know, I think the message has gone through. There's just one more thing I want um, to ask yes, you about related to what you were saying, just because uh, because I've also got somebody else backstage, Ziryab, um, he wants to come on. Um, yes. So just um, going back to, because um, you start, the thing you shared first with us was that verse about the, you know, the, um, you know, crucifixion, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. So I just want to get what you say about the verse which comes right after it. So, you know, it talks about repentance, like you said. Okay. So, you know, I've got on the screen now. So the verse before is that verse, which is talking about, you know, those who wage war on God and, God and the messenger, etc. They should be killed or crucified or their, you know, hand and feet from opposite side should be cut off or... Um, they should be, you know. It, does it? Does it? Sorry, sorry. It doesn't say mm. should be. It say is there there what happens to re recompense? What happens to them? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yes. So, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. So just, it, it's just what happens that. to Everybody, them. Yeah. He's saying that you know because this is in the passive voice. So he's saying this is what what um, happens to them. So, um, but the next verse it says it says you know إلا الذين تابوا except mm -hmm. those who repent من قبل أن تقدروا عليهم before okay. you are, before you right. sort of okay. gain power over them, yes. فَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورَ Then know that God is um, merciful. Okay. Merciful. So what do you say about um, All right. how does this fit into what okay. you uh, Yes, I understand. Because verse has that, that previous verse has two parts. One is what mm. happens to them this life, okay, and one mm. is what happens to them next life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you you know, uh, they get killed during the battle, all right? Then mm. on other side, Allah hereafter, uh, there will be in, uh, what is it, awful doom, okay? They will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Not only on, in this world, they will be punished by themselves, you know, by, by getting, you know, uh, um, being, uh, what is it, um, expelled from their house, because this is what happened to them, uh, because of, uh, you know, those uh, chaos which existed, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came right. with his message. So the, the second mm -hmm. part, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them. If you, they repent before you catch them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish them, will forgive them. Yes. So the first part. So are you talking Are you talking about this part here? So here. Yes, yes, you know, exactly. At the end the, of it, it says, that is just to, for everybody at home. It says here, that is for them a... Um, well, 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 Azab well, Azim. Khizyun. Yeah. No, Khizyun, a disgrace. Yeah. Yes. A disgrace for them in the dunya. In the dunya. Okay. Walahum, and lahum, lahum and for them in the next world is a, is a big punishment. So it's yes. like these are two things. There's something in the dunya and then something. Yes, what happens, happens to them in dunya is what uh, Pharaoh do. Okay. He okay. crucified them. He, uh, you know, Romans do that crucify people, you know, chop the, uh, the, we can say like, you know, Adolf Hitler attack you, you know, expel mm -hmm. you, kill you, bomb you. So this is what they do to themselves. If they don't follow Allah Taala's command, 
guidance. They do these things to themselves. This is what will happen to us. You know, the nuclear bombs over our head. This is, you know, if we don't follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command, then this is what will happen to us in this world. And next world will be, you know, go to hell because we didn't follow his command, which, which is love, you know, uh, all these, um, you know, beautiful, uh, good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says himself that I only guide you to good deeds, uh, command you to do good deeds, and uh, prevent you from immorality. So this is all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, okay? So if you don't follow that, then, for example, if I rape somebody, okay, my daughter can be raped, okay? Because, you know, someone else like me can rape my daughter or my wife, okay? So if I go mm -hmm. kill somebody, somebody else like me can kill my family. So this is what will happen to us to us if we don't follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandment, okay? So he doesn't allow us to commit such a brutal, barbaric act, you know, because he's the most merciful mm -hmm. and forgiving God. I get it. Okay, so before before you, um, I bring on to the app, uh, just uh, so that the question which is on screen, so um, some of you is asking you uh, to share your, your opinion on the verse, um, Kuntum khayra ummatin. Can you please bring it? Uh, if yes. I... Yes, just give me a second. Mm -hmm. um, kuntum, find out what number it is. Kuntum khayra ummatin. Um, it's a verse uh, three, yeah, ayah 110. Let me bring it up. Um, verse three, ayah 110. And after this, uh, so, <clears throat> after your uh, stream is finished, I will start mine. Uh, those who would like to talk to me directly, they are welcome. Yes, yes. Uh, by the way, everybody, Perfect Dawah has his own channel, and he does a stream uh, generally around the same time that I do mine um, on his channel. Um, but um, you know, he, he just put it back uh, by a couple of hours today, and I brought mine a little bit forward just so and he could come on to mine. Um, so this is the verse the brother is asking you to talk about. It says, you are the best of nations produced, uh, as an example, I'm reading Sayyid International. You are the best nation produced as an example for mankind. You enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. And if only the people of the scripture had believed, it would have been better for them. Among them are believers, but most of them are defiantly disobedient. So he would like your... Okay, let your me see. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, give me the... It is uh, chapter 3, 110, yeah? 110, yes, that's right. Okay, let me see. Because uh, I have to, okay, I have to read it uh, three different translation. For a second, I will... Now check it. One hundred ten. And just a reminder to everybody who is uh, watching now, um, please um, check out because on this channel I have now um, two okay, uh, strikes. Yes, and yes. Um, I'm worried that if I get a third one, the channel will be deleted. So I've set up a backup channel. Um, I made a post about it in the community tab. Uh, and I'll, I'll link to it, I think, at the end of this video. Um, so please, if you can, um, go and just subscribe to that to that backup channel. It's called Quranic Islam Archives or Archives. Right? That's how you pronounce it. Quranic <coughs> Islam Archives. Um, so please, if you could um, go on to that, um, subscribe to it, and maybe also just play the, there's only one video which is on there right now, but I'm certainly going to mirror all the other videos onto that channel as well. Um, so just, if you can play that, just to give it um, a bit of wind. I think the algorithm in the beginning, when a channel is new, and, you know, people start, it gives it more exposure. Um, so maybe it could um, get um, that video. The video I put on was the, was the video about um, those whom God loves, in the Quran, who he says he loves and who he says he doesn't love, because I think that's uh, one of the more more important and underappreciated videos on my channel. So I put it there. So hopefully you'll, you'll benefit from the from the algorithm, um, and and you know if you guys could support that, would be would be great. Yes, go ahead, perfect, Dama. 
And uh, those who would like to also talk to me later as well, uh, you can subscribe to my channel as well. And uh, every Saturday I have also my, uh, yes, stream. So the question is, uh, what was his question? Kindly share your insight about the verse, okay? <clears throat> uh, what is uh, his question, you think, okay? It's, it's about this verse, this verse in, uh, I know. in chapter 3, chapter 3, 110. Okay. Yes, I understand, but uh, it says that you are the best, uh, I understand, yes. Uh, Ummah, okay, uh, and Allah just uh, command you to do good deeds, yes, and then uh, it says that most of the uh, uh, Ahli Kitab, uh, they are disobedience, yeah? Okay, them yeah. are evil live. So, but it doesn't say all of them, yeah? It says most of them. Okay, I don't know, uh, because uh, unfortunately, yeah, by the way, this uh, uh, <clears throat> disbelief, okay, uh, like kof, uh, has been also misinterpreted, that m most people think that uh, kof is disbelief, which is... Um, if you want, I can share with you uh, something also about kuf. That kuf is just bad deeds, okay? And kufar are those who. Uh, chapter sixteen, verse eighty-three says that they recognize the favor of Allah, then they deny it. Who are they? They are the disbelievers, yeah. And most of them are kafir. So if kuf is disbelief, how can most of disbelievers be kafir? Hmm. Okay? Okay. So, kufr is not disbelief, which has been unfortunately wrongly uh, interpreted. Kufr is uh, hmm. <clears throat> bad deeds because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide us to do good deeds, and if we reject that, it means that, it means that we do bad deeds. We are going to do bad deeds. Okay? So, hmm. okay. By, but if we do good deeds, if we... Uh, then we are not a kafir, okay, which, uh, of course, we can do always bad deeds, which Allah SWT says that if you, uh, you know, avoid major bad deeds, I will forgive your minor bad deeds. So Allah SWT knows that we do bad deeds. We are human beings, we can make mistakes, but He wants us not to do major bad deeds at least, okay? So this is uh, my take on this uh, verse as well, that... Uh, mm -hmm. M most yes, of them excellent. are, you know, uh, they are not yes. disbelievers. Yes. Okay. Yes, most of thank them. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and if, um, if you know, if that, um, if the answer wasn't satisfi satisfactory for you, um, Pius, maybe you can go on to his uh, stream yes. later on and, you know, yeah, you please. Give you a more in-depth answer or something. Um, we can talk more, now, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, we can, can talk, talk more. Later. Uh, but for now, I'm perfect, though, you know, um, yes. Mustafa, right? My name is Mustafa. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Jazakallah. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, my brother. Thank um, you for inviting me. We, we talk, inshallah, other times as well. <laughs> okay. Yes, inshallah. Thank okay, you so much for coming on. Thank you, my brother. You are very patient. Thank you. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, by the way, I will, I will say something about, I would like to say, mm -hmm. uh, I saw a lot of, you know, uh, the, the, every year this uh, Christmas time comes, you know, uh, some mm -hmm. extremist Muslims, they say, oh, it's a kufri, if you say. Uh, you know, Merry Christmas to, you know, to mm. Christians and so on. And it is very, very bad, uh, you know, terrible from uh, fellow Muslim because, uh, you know, uh, actually, I, my wife uh, is um, uh, Russian, okay? She's converted, Alhamdulillah, but uh, her family are not converted. So, and mm. I have neighbors who are atheists, but they are, you know, they celebrate Christmas. And I have to say to them, Merry Christmas, understand? So this is yeah, yeah, uh, uh, this is. I mean, that, that's a, there's a clear yeah, there's a clear verse about that. You know, if you are greeted with a greeting, in reply yes. of a like greeting or better than it. So I don't exactly. think that's, I mean, unfortunately, even a simple thing like this, which is just one of the mon most mundane things, just to greet people, the courtesy yeah, yeah. to reply to a greeting. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, that has been um, sort of um, even that has been infiltrated by the by yeah. um, a corruption within our, within our day. Yeah. But, you know, that's how it is, unfortunate. But they say, if you say uh, Merry Christmas to them, then you believe that Jesus was Son of God. Oh, come yeah. on. Yes. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> Give me a break. I just said Merry Christmas to them. Some, yeah. some Christians, yeah. some black Christians, they believe Jesus was black. 
If I say Merry yeah. Christmas to them, I don't say that, oh, Jesus was black. <laughs> okay? So, or so, other Christians, they believe that Jesus was, uh, you know, blonde with blonde, <laughs> blue eyes. That's, when I say Merry you. Christmas to them, I don't say, I don't believe that. Or oh, another one says that, uh, okay, his uh, birthday was uh, summer, not uh, this, you know, 25th of uh, yeah. Jan uh, sorry, December. I say, for me, it doesn't yeah. matter, okay? They believe in it, and they, I just have to be, kind and good yeah. to them and say Merry Christmas, uh, you know, all these things, uh, right. uh, wish them, right. you know, nice uh, right. holidays and so on. So anyway, yeah. I wish that right. my brothers and sisters, fellow Muslims, they wake up uh, one day and they be, you know, more peaceful, more friendly, understand better the religion. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, my brother. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Yeah, thank you.